Hey, do you know how I made this? Well, not this. All of this. I began by using the environment light mixer to increase the fog density and fall off and rotate the directional light. I wanted to challenge myself so I decided to use a friend's copy of Dynamic Sky. I opened the project file, migrated the assets over and added it to my scene and it crashed. I needed to migrate the entire folder. From here, I changed the settings to be performance and changed the sky sphere temperature to be colder. Finally, I added spotlights for the street lamps and cars. For the closer lights, I swapped the emissive material for a point light. I keyframed the camera's movement, focal length and focal distance. I also decreased the exposure and animated the lights and clouds. I couldn't unwrap the Buildify models properly with Blender, so I used world line textures in Unreal Engine instead, but terrible. In the end, I used the modeling tools to project my UVs. I was receiving an error where random materials looked blurry. Tried turning off my mitmaps. They're like the equivalent of LODs, but for textures. I then found I just needed to increase my texture pool size with r.streaming.pool size. I use 300, but 400 if you have 4 GB of VRAM. To set up Nanite tessellation, I went to my default engine. Here I entered two lines of code to the end of my rendering settings. I could then make a landscape material. I imported a metahuman and added Mixamo animations. I then created a short cinematic showcasing the idle character animation before zooming in on the model I created in Houdini. I began by using a gimbal to film my footage with the intention of camera tracking it. I didn't use enough tracking markers, plus the footage close to me would be hard to track. Instead, I decided to use a plane inside of Unreal. I used a free application called Switchlight Studios to generate normal, roughness and depth maps for my footage. I wanted to use a depth map to displace my subdivided plane and make it 3D. I created a material source and texture and added them to my timeline. I enabled the Nanite Mesh Displace plugin and added a subdivided rectangle, but I couldn't get the mesh to displace while using an alpha channel. I asked a friend who told me to use World Position Offset instead, which worked. I finished by tweaking the lighting and adding light beams. I needed my Unreal camera to match my real camera. I adjusted the ISO and shutter speed and animated the f-stop and focal length. Additionally, I matched the frame rate. My Unreal scene was much darker, so I corrected the exposure to 4.5. I enabled the USD Importer plugin and imported my animations. I then added them to a folder, added them to my timeline, and then put them in another folder. I exported an EXR with DWAB compression. I created an ICIO tut in the color config and then added console variables. This one makes it 4K as 200 would be 8K. I applied the game mode override so it would export cinematic and then set my output resolution as 4K. It took around nine hours. I rendered the final clip at 48 FPS and remapped the time. I enabled optical flow to generate any missing frames. I re-rendered to fix the nanite tessellation in the landscape and the depth map on me. The depth map started to error, so I removed it. Unreal started crashing on export due to transparent materials on nanite meshes. I removed the nanite, but it still crashed. I changed the temporal count from 64 to 8 and enabled TAA, which sped up the render. I also removed the noise-related console commands, which stopped Unreal from crashing. I couldn't figure out why this light beam was here, as it only appeared when I rendered in 4K. It must have been an issue with the rendering settings. Which way is it to the next level? The way forward is to the left. If I were to ask the other gatekeeper which way it was to the next level, what would they say? The other gatekeeper would also say that the way forward is to the left. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, then Google it. The two gatekeepers riddle. But what you realise is, you can collide with it. What's the longest sentence you can say? The trick here is to just walk straight off. It's perfectly in the middle. Imagine this island as... My final brain cell. Hello there.
Ready How for can you? I help you today? And if you go left, which is the way he says, but you just shoot straight back. It just sort of loops from here. Created a single sprite and added velocity, curl noise, and other adjustments. I used the free Niagara UI renderer plugin to add the system to my widget. The default sprite's material domain is set to surface, so I made my own glowing material, which was set to user interface. I coded some particles to follow the mouse, but I wanted more particles to appear the faster the mouse moved. I made my spawn rate lurk between 20 and 1500, depending on the mouse's velocity. I swapped the cursor for my own and changed the button's background to on hovered. I made a simple animation to fade away the text. I used the convey plugin to make my model into an AI NPC. I swapped the player character class to convey base player. I made a convey base character blueprint and added my mesh. And I added my animations using an animation graph I found online. I couldn't stop the AIs from interrupting each other. So I contacted the convey discord channel, only to discover you just had to be looking at them. I used the HTTP plugin to create a blueprint which can communicate with ChatGPT. Here, I could tell the AI how to act before the player sends their first message. To allow the blueprint to update from a widget, I used a custom event with an added string input for the text content. In order to be able to interact with the widget properly, flip-flop between game modes. For my AI characters, I changed the widget to appear on a button press opposed to begin play. To add collisions to the 3D text, I got its mesh extent and origin, and with some extra transformations, I generated a box collider where each letter is. For the final spinning cube, I used a rotating movement, lerp to movement, and physics constraint. For the flag, I used a cloth simulation. I then enabled full rebuild and packaged my game. I wanted to give the VR character a body. I imported the Unreal Engine mannequin into my template and placed it in my VR pawn. In the animation blueprint, I used the Upper Body IK plugin and the UBIK solver nodes to track the player's hands and head. I then set these in my VR pawn by casting to my animation blueprint. I used arrows instead of my motion controllers and fiddled around with them until they matched the hands. I could now use the T-Pose animation sequence to export a single frame animation for each hand movement. In my animation blueprint, I used the state machine to change between animation states. I then set these variables in my VR pawn. I tried to swap the mesh for my own, but this received a bones and missing error. I tried to retarget the UE4 mannequin rig, but this did not work. In the end, I swapped the mesh for another and it worked fine. When I looked down, I could see the inside of my head. I tried to move the camera in my VR pawn, but its world position was being set in my animation blueprint. So I had to change this here. I downloaded the Unreal Engine integration plugin from the Meta website and extracted this into my marketplace folder. I added the motion controllers and set their sources. I added an Oculus XR controller and set its skeleton, mesh type, and visibility. In the Meta XR plugin settings, I enabled hands and controllers in the tracking support, changed the frequency to high, and set it to use the more advanced hand tracking model. The final step was to become a meta developer and enable developer runtime features. I had planned on integrating the hand tracking with the full body VR, but in the end I didn't have time. this video helpful uh maybe you like it or subscribe i don't know that helps me out a lot so thanks if you do and no worries if you don't before i go i just want to let you know that this content is also available on my free interactive website which you can learn about how i made here in this video it works best on a pc so i wouldn't bother if you're on a phone or a tablet or something and i will leave you with one final tip and that is to eat one gram of protein for every kilogram of body weight thanks for watching bye